on the campus of the University of Tennessee. We welcome you to Knoxville, the Tennessee football spring game, orange and white, and the first look at what the 2024 version, year number four of these Vols under head coach Josh Heupel, deep. And then they'll start with their first possession at the 25-yard line. Last year, Josh Turbyville handling the kickoffs, fourth in the SEC with a 72% touchback rate, and that one all the way to the goal line. So Iamaleava under pressure and throws it away. Uh, the opening possession of the game under pressure there from Jeremiah T. Lander, breaking through on the off linebacker who was hurt against Virginia in the opener last year, not playing today as a precautionary measure. And the handoff here on second down goes to Deshaun Bishop, the redshirt freshman from right here in Knoxville, and the tackle by, you can see, look at him, diagnosing the defense, having a chance to, to make the line, make the... And he gets just a four-man rush, the throw to the outside, just past the original line of scrimmage, and taken in by Chaz Nimrod on the edge because they feel that's the fastest and most effective way to communicate what they're doing. I also think it's important too, when you know you're dealing with a freshman quarterback, you don't want to put too much on his plate. And also you want everybody on the same page, right? So everybody through the year in his career, and Josh Heupel really pleased with the progress he's made in this spring. Feels the pressure, gets it to the outside, and it's Dayton Sneed who makes the catch and gets across the 35 yard line. Again, the tempo is gonna go. Moore fakes the handoff, fastball to the 39-yard line, and the first touch for Chris Brazel, the second. Hoping to be yet another impact transfer wide receiver here as he's taken down. Defense shows blitz off the edge. Flag, it's a free play. Deep ball, single coverage deep downfield, and a little bit too much on it, but it looked like there was a jump from the defense on that blitz from the slot. Instrumental in the transition to the starting role for Nico Iamaleava. Blitz comes again after the penalty, and on the handoff, it is just enough for find the play. And I heard that it chilled, I sent chills into my bones. Pressure coming, check down throw. Goes over the middle as they get toward midfield from Moore, who felt that pressure coming. Mike, you, you mentioned lines that Coach Banks told us yesterday was that he craves violence from the linebacker position. Another good throw there over the middle. And a hard hit as well. So the second team unit working well here. And a handoff on first down is bottled up right at the line of scrimmage. A couple more, we talked about that in the open, and they're really looking for somebody to step up. Good pocket, ball lofted deep near sideline, and incomplete, just a little bit too long. Looking for Chris Brazel in the end zone. They got him single coverage here again. And they see an opening in the defense with the handoff. It's a run short of the first down as Spillman once again comes up to make the tackle on Khalifa Keeve. And they like Spillman a lot. You've got two new coaches on the staff this year. William Inge, one of those, coming in to coach the linebackers and says of Spillman, he's one of my favorite players to coach because I never have to speed him up. I only have to slow him down because of the way he wants to. Last year, we are just two drives in here to the spring game and a first look at the freshman from Savannah, Georgia, Jake Merklinger, who's taken over here at quarterback for this drive. And he gets out of the pocket for a nice spring. Coach talked about the, the first scrimmage they had, how much he, he grew from that process, getting out there, some live action, and, and again, another chance here in the stadium. It's not. He sends Patrick Wilk out on the flat. A flag is thrown pre-snap. And the slant caught just shy of midfield. Wow. are set correctly. Yeah, that's always spring ball. You're all about the fundamentals as you talked about there, Mike. And you don't want to have mistakes. You don't want to have penalties. And remember, a lot of these things that you're running, whether you've got a lot of the incoming freshmen, who, freshman players who have enrolled early, and so you're not you're not putting the kitchen sink at these guys this this soon before fall camp. And by the way, you got a, you got a few more guys coming here. Abel has been prolific in just three years. They broke in 19 team offensive records. That's another offside. So why not take a deep shot down the sideline? I almost caught it, Mike. Long. I almost had it. I trust you. It was right 
in my hands. Still learning. <laughs> Third down and 10. Against a four man rush. Great pocket here. Ball over the middle. Oh, and it's just off the hands. Right down the seam for Jackson Locke, the redshirt junior wide receiver. And, and see how well he can execute that here. First punt, 48 yards. And this is one of your and that's to the transfers 11. with McCoy, yeah. 49 yards on that punt. In Texas, first year wide receiver transfer from Tulane as he comes back out on the field here with Nico Iamaleava and company. And Iamaleava showing off his ability to get up there, of course, anytime that they close in on. Browse is a, a really fun prospect here. You know, he, he could have stayed at Tulane. Really, Fritz and that offensive staff, they decided to go on to, to Houston. And so there were options for Brazel. He, he could have stayed there. He had a great role. He was a very productive, bit different than Thornton, who also goes about 6'5", 6'6". And here he is, wide open on the outside. And you can see already Nico trying to get the football to number 11. The thing that's interesting, too, about Brazel, you know. Gaston Moore at the helm here on this drive. He looks for a quick throw across the middle, has the completion to midfield, and a little bit of extra effort. He looks like he'd be playing center for the basketball team. Ball is tipped and incomplete, intended for Dante Thornton. They're really excited, Dustin, about this tight end group as well, with Miles. Tight ends involved in their offense. They, they've had two tight ends darn near every season that coach has been here at UT. And now you look at maybe Kitzelman and Stay, he's kind of taken over that role as the two big tight ends in this offense. Football. So far today, though, no scoring as Gaston Moore is at quarterback here to start the second quarter. And a toss over the middle. It's Charlie Browder with the catch. And he's right to the first down marker at the 39 yard. So Moore, the red shirt senior. Zings that 35 yard line catch. And another first down. So they're moving the ball quickly here. They get it out to the edge. I find that fascinating too when you're a transfer and you come in here, especially when you're a veteran. How do you fit in, right? I mean, how do you, how do the guys respond to you in the locker? I think that's one of the most important things. And I always think it's good that guys get an opportunity to get in here early when you make that transfer. Guys to really mesh prior to fall camp. Especially when you're going up against guys who a year ago you had to say, hey, I don't like those guys. We're trying to beat them. <laughs> So third and one as they get the ball into the red zone and the handoff to Wilk does get them the first down. Here's an interesting spot, Dustin, to watch how the defense fares here. That's one of the areas that Josh Heupel said they want to get most in FBS as the offense goes to work here in the red zone. And there's good blocking in front and we have our first touchdown of the afternoon. Touchdown for Dayton Sneed, the red shirt freshman wide receiver. And he puts the first six on the board on a 13 yard catch and scramble into the end zone. It's a heck of, heck of a job by Sneed on the outside. You'll see the freshman defensive back for Root come in there, 26. Just kind of whiffs on the tackle and a great job by Sneed finding the end zone. Gilbert, the redshirt freshman from Memphis, and he puts that up and through. Gilbert arrived on campus, D1 wide receiver in the high school class. And that's going to make the coaching tape there. Even though no return, you want to be as good as you can on special teams as Deshaun Bishop comes off the field, backfield. Good pocket, ball to the outside, and a nine yard pickup with the throw to the edge. Splits are for the receivers. I was just noticing that. I mean, they're, they're splitting out well beyond the numbers as there's a deep shot down the field and a little bit too much contact. Oh, I think you let that one go. I'm a former defensive back, by the way. Pass interference on the defense number 50. You get guys out there well beyond the numbers. You can see both sides. But when they run those stack formations, that's what's really interesting. And you throw those quick sort of now screens. Almost like design runs. It's 
Berklinger, nice, nice wheels there. Getting outside the pocket there. Yeah, he gets inside the 30, so a gain of about 15 yards there for and the number five quarterback in that group. Once again on five minutes to the half as Merklinger waits in the pocket and steps up to run again. He's got some space to the 10, and he is in for the touchdown. A 26-yard scramble. Talked about how highly rated he was out of high school, but this is a guy who ran for 32 touchdowns as well. So not just a pocket passer, very mobile quarterback. And, you know, obviously in this game, you get, you get touched, you're down. He was untouched right up the middle. Sees that thing part and finds his way to the end. Now for their white squad. Hard to tell which team scored. <laughs> Going for the extra point to try and even things up. Last year, their kickoff man. And in a three-man race along with Carver and Gil. In Cleveland, you saw it. It was absolutely amazing like to see totality um, to see it downtown Cleveland on the Great Lakes at the Great Lakes Science Center with NASA and the STEM and the kids there man it was a, a beautiful event to take in it's really once in a lifetime to take it in in that in that setting and that experience um, so it was a great time and it was great to be back in Cleveland with some good weapons all the opportunities that are thrown your way and you do that man uh, when you look up you'll be very proud of your journey. I have to ask you last year one of, one of the great stories in the NFL was you and uh, you traded to, to Arizona and then you end up in Minnesota like the next week, it seemed like. It was weeks just like getting traded and not thinking you're going to get traded and trade deadline happening. Oh, we got a big play going on. Okay. What do you think about that play? Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Crazy seeing Big O with the tackle all the way down the field. That was great hustle by Big O, man. He's awesome. Amari, he does a great job on and off the field. Uh, representing the we'll turn around here. But, yeah, it was, a, it was a crazy story, man, crazy journey um, throughout the year. Uh, but I'm thankful for it. It makes me who I am. Oh, how about that throw? How about, tell me about that throw from Nick. There we go, we've been, we've been waiting to see something right there. That was a great throw, great drive. Good to see, good to see Nico lead the ball, snap for a touchdown. I'll be excited to see that all fall this year. There have been so many great quarterbacks to play for the Volunteers, and, and fans here in Volunteer Nation are pumped about, about Nico. What have you seen from him so far? Yeah, I think one is just season. I'm looking forward to it, man. Um, I've been here, I've watched him for afar. I played them last year when I was in Arizona. Um, so they have a tremendous team. So I'm excited, man, to, to uh, embrace my role in that come From Rocky Top when we come back. Yeah, Dustin, a great drive. Finished off 27-yard strike. Nico Iamaleava to Chaz Nimrod. And Nico perfect through the air this afternoon. 25. Or out of the pocket on the run 26 seconds first half we still got more people to you know sort of rally around you or listen to you obviously I wasn't playing quarterback and he is but now that it's his job as what a throw that is Moore lets it fly and the timeout pays off because Mike Matthews the number five wide receiver in the ESPN 300 takes it runs 63 yards and a touchdown with some time to spare Wow, Rocky Top salivating now as they see the young receiver making some plays. What speed on the outside by Mike Matthews. And when we had a chance to, to chat with Coach Heupel this week, he was raving about Mike Matthews. And this is a guy that really prob probably could play defense or offense. Was a great safety in high school. Great size, 6'1", 186. And I really like what Coach Heifel told us yesterday. Is it's a guy that really hasn't seen a lot of press coverage from the wide receiver position. <laughs> and that's, you know, you talk about the many ways in which making a jump to the SEC is difficult. Max Gilbert with the extra point. Is that anybody who's playing college football at the probably lining up 10 yards off you playing zone coverage and you're wide open every every snap. That's different. And now to be out here in an environment in a big stadium like Neyland and you got man coverage. And you make a play like that, and it was man, by the way. He beats his man with the speed release off the outside, creates that separation. Ford, and he takes over here first and 10 at the 25-yard line with Hunter Barnes with him in the backfield. So empty set. And they call him down as he took off and started to run. For a loss of three, second down 13.
Uh, the throw ball pops loose in and out of the hands of Trey Weary. And Dustin, to go back to that in this game, as you mentioned, the offensive line, maybe down four, four starters potentially in this game. So a lot of the backups playing against some of the starters, more so in the first half than what we'll see here. In the well, and I got to tell you, you know, when I when I played way back in the day, uh, our of course at Ohio State, our defensive line was fantastic. It made my life in the secondary so much easier. And so when you talk about miss across the middle and then James Pierce Jr., first team all SEC last year, and the SEC's leading returning tackle for loss and sack leader coming back this year, Nimrod on the edge. Five games in 2023. His most regular season action came at the end of the year as he loads up and goes deep down the sideline. And a little bit too much sizzle on the pass for Caleb Webb. A 2023 aspects of Nico for this season. You know, obviously it's tough to lose a quarterback like Joe Milton, but Nico steps in with all kinds of hype. And I think he's got a really, really good head on his shoulders to be able to handle this. And you talked about earlier, Mike. I'm amazed, by the way, that Josh Dobbs got out and played golf yesterday. It was, <laughs> it was raining sideways in Knoxville yesterday, but watching Jackson Ross punt, which he can do with both feet, by the way, I'm surprised that there aren't a few holes in the ceiling of the indoor facility with how much velocity. And here, Brazel's in the slot right in front of me. Play action, first down. And that's Dante Thornton coming back after the ankle injury. Gain of 14. That injury against Missouri. Talking, in if he wanted to. Instead, he comes back to Tennessee with a lot to prove. And, and now when you add another receiver like Brazel on the other side, I, I like what they're doing. And again, Keeping these guys in through the third quarter. This is third down and eight. Flag is thrown at the snap. Deep ball downfield. A couple of strides clear. It's Brazel to the 10, the 5, and that's a touchdown. And you're going to have a flag. Offside on the defense. That penalty is declined. Results to play is a touchdown. He beats Jalen McMurray right off the line of scrimmage, and I'm not so sure exactly who it was on. Did he announce a number, Mike? Because I think McMurray, no, it's not. It's, it's, it's much different, and to be able to have that versatility to do that, they always say the more you the more you can do, McMurray can do a lot, but I'll tell you who can do more. How about Chris Brazel taking this one to the house? Obviously, the injury is really frustrating. It happens in the middle of the year. You're off to a good start. How tough was that to have to watch your guys throughout the rest of the season, knowing had you been out there, you'd be able to help the guys? It was tough. I mean, it was tough at first, and then you realize it's imminent, and the work's been put in. And then just me personally, I got a lot to prove to myself. Just like an injury like this, you want to come out and show yourself, hey, I'm, I'm not only the same player, but I'm better. And I can still improve and push the needle on myself. So, um, and there's a lot to prove. And there's talk, talk to me about, about your young quarterback. Man, I mean, he's, he's like a receiver's dream. You know, he's an accurate passer. He can extend plays. He's great on his feet. And he's smart. And um, he's a ball player. So when you're looking at, like, what you got in front of you. To get back healthy, it's going to be phenomenal, I'm, I'm assuming. Uh, how close are you guys in that room? You, got, you guys got a bunch of dudes. I'm, I'm guessing you guys have a little bit of fun in the quarterback room, or the wide receiver room. Man, we do. I mean, it's like a brotherhood. Like, th those are my brothers. That's my family. Uh, we lean on each other for everything. We appreciate the time, and best of luck to you. Appreciate you. Here he is, Boomer McCoy. Back to you, Mike. All right, flag is down on a deep ball into double coverage down the far sideline. And the ball is caught, but unfortunately out of bounds there for Trey Weary on the deep throw with a flag Outside, down at the 41. On the defense, number 98, five-yard penalty. The abilities of being a player, and I can't imagine being a quarterback, having to learn an offense and all these things. So it's it's certainly a challenge. And you know now with guys coming in a little bit early, I, I do think that sort of helps them because you, you can get established a little bit earlier on. But, but nonetheless, one and four, Dameron, who chose the Vols over, offers from East Tennessee, Eastern Kentucky. And Jackson Ross with a punt down to the 10 for Jermod McCoy, 47 yards. They said today, if you had to pace, so lots of things to be happy about. I had, by the way, I had, Tennessee the, I had the volunteers in my bracket winning it all. Easy for you to say now. There's no way for us to fact check that. <laughs> Go on ESPN. Defense drops seven. That's a first down throw, a catch, a run, a little bit of nifty move in there from Dayton Sneed, who's had a pretty good day on the outside. Yeah, Sneed's a, a teamer. And 11 carries for 24 yards a season ago. 
Long throw to the numbers. One missed tackle, make it two, and a third is what it takes to bring down Caleb Webb. 1950 up until 2020, the year before Heifel arrived. That play is blown dead. Tennessee had a quarterback produce 3,000 yards of total offense five times in 70 years, and it's happened now in three straight seasons. Fourth in the country and ranked third in scoring at 39 points a game, only behind Ohio State and Georgia. And I love this one because it's fun to watch. They've taken a snap once every... I know what you do on Madden. <laughs> Chuck it. And instead, it ends up with a sack, which, of course, quarterbacks can't be taken down in this game. But talk about what Tim Banks has done in his three seasons as defensive coordinator. The last time that happened was Tulane in the SEC in 1947. And they NC State at Oklahoma at Arkansas. I mean, it's going to be tough to start it. But if you can somehow get through that little bit of a gauntlet to, to start the year, you're going to have a chance. And you know, no one knows what Florida is going to be, Alabama is going to be. But those games are on the timer here. And Navy Schuler at the controls, hands it off. Third down and 10 to Hunter Barnes, the redshirt sophomore out of Memphis. Couple of injured running backs today, Cam Seldon. No squirrel white in action along with Drew McCoy, who's injured. Ethan Davis at tight end, not available for action today. And an incomplete pass there on fourth down. For a straight on field goal try. A 45 yard attempt to close it out. And when you're ready, Mike, we've got a special guest down here. Take it away, D-Fox. How about we're joined by the starting quarterback of the Volunteers, the new starting quarterback of the Volunteers. Nico, how we doing, buddy? Doing great, man. How are you? Oh, not as good as you. You look great out there today on some of those deep throws. How you feeling? Feeling great, man. You know, got an opportunity to go out there and get better with my teammates and, you know, just showcase our team. You know, I carried that over to this uh, offseason, this spring. And, um, yeah, really just improving with, with my teammates. We've got a couple new guys from the portal. So, you know, just getting them up to par with, you know, our offense and our tempo. Is it tough being a young guy and experience brought in in the secondary? And talk about a strong culture. Guys who choose to come back and use their sixth year. Cooper Mays, Javantez Spragans, Brew McCoy, who we heard from during the broadcast. This is a team that is